Welcome back to P1. Today we are looking at second order derivatives, unit 8.7. Now, if I start with a function, y equals or f of x equals, whatever it is, and I differentiate, I end up with the gradient function, which we've been using. Now, if I differentiate a second time, I get the rate of change of the gradient function. And this is written like d2y by dx squared. Oh, two little, little lines to show that it is the second derivative. And what this is useful for you guys is that we can use it to decide or to show us whether a point has a maximum or a minimum at that point. So if I differentiate something once, a curve, and make it equal to zero, I can find the turning point. Differentiating it a second time then allows me to see if those turning points are a maximum value or a minimum value. And this comes later on in the course, um, not for P1, but just so that you know, if it was less than zero, it shows a maximum, greater than zero shows a minimum. When it's equal to zero, it just means that there's no way of concluding anything at that point. So we'd have to look at the actual curve or the values either side of the point. So what we're going to do here is just differentiate this twice. And it's very straightforward. So we differentiate once. So I need to multiply by 4, that gives me 20x, and I take 1 away from the power, so it becomes 3. Then I do that a second time. So I multiply this time by 3, and I take 1 away from the power. And that is my second derivative. Second example here. This time we've got a 1 over x in there, so the first thing I need to do is change that into a form that I can differentiate. And then I differentiate once, so multiply by power, take 1 away from the power. So 21x squared. Multiply by the power, take 1 away from the power. So it becomes minus 1x to the minus 2. Then differentiate a second time, multiply by the power, so 2 times 21 is 42, take 1 away from the power, x to the power 1. Then I multiply by the power, so multiplying by negative 2, so it's going to become positive 2x to the negative 3. And then I can leave it like that, or if I want to put it in the same form as the question was originally, then I would change it to 2 over x cubed instead. But as I said, both of these solutions would be with full marks.
So differentiate then here, bring down the power, 3 bracket 3x minus 1 squared, multiplied by the inside of the brackets differentiated, which is 3. So that gives me 9, 3x to the minus 1 squared. Differentiated a second time, bring down my power, 18, 3x minus 1 times and the inside differentiated is 3 so that gives me 54 3x to the power minus 1 now when d2y by dx squared is 0 then that means that 54 3x minus 1 is 0 so expanding my brackets gives me 162x minus 54 162x equals 54, x equals 54 over 162, or x is a third. That's obviously a longer way of doing it, but why would you do that? So the easier way would be just to divide straight away by this 54, wouldn't it? And that gives me 3x minus 1 equals 0. 3x equals 1, x equals a third. So just think about things before you do it and rush in. So we've got some information here. x is 2.5, my second derivative is 10. So that's what I need to do. So we get 3px squared minus 10px. And the second derivative is 6 px minus 10p. Substitute 2.5 in. We get 6p times 2.5 minus 10p and that's going to equal 10. 6 times 2.5 is 15. So we've got 15p minus 10p equals 10. 5p equals 10p equals 2. So another way of writing f of x would be 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 6. Thank you for watching this video. Nice short one. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, just uh, hit the like button. Feel free to comment below if you want to ask any questions. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you next time.